150 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. I am very grateful there are actually a, a group of people that actually sit down and watch my stuff or try to push me and motivate me to make more content for you guys. I would like this YouTube channel to grow. That's one of my biggest goals this year because I would love to do magic and YouTube and I making films is used to be one of my biggest dreams and YouTube is probably the closest that I'll get to that. And I know 150 subscribers is really not that much. And one of my favorite quotes from, uh, this is a great YouTube channel I've been watching for years, uh, Rich at Review Tech, he would say something like, yeah, I'm the puddle of piss in the ocean of YouTube. <laughs> yeah, because if you have people that have like, a man that has 100 million subscribers, basically 150 is just, it's nothing. And also, I've been wanting to do this video for a little while, but I want to save it for like a special occasion. And I think 150 subscribers is a pretty good landmark. So I wanted to tell you about one of the worst event planners I had to work with. Uh, I would say kind of unprofessional and they basically kind of financially screwed me over on a lot of things. So I'm gonna take you back to like 2017. 2017, I just moved out of my mother's house. I'm in my apartment and I want to start working on magic again. I want to start doing it, try to do it full time because Chris Ramsey's channel is really inspiring me, especially in like 2017. So I get my apartment and I'm trying to look for event planners, can't really find any. And my girlfriend told me that her dad works with a few of them because he actually does like balloon animals. And if you ever go to the TD Garden, he goes to like the Celtics games and he gives makes balloon animals, gives them to the kids. Sometimes he works at uh, restaurants, does that for people and everything. So he uh, gives me a couple numbers and like all of them, they don't pick up. And I've heard some people got into like, got DUIs, some of the owner, one of the owners. I don't know if that was true or not, but they would just not answer the phone after weeks. And one of them picked up, uh, we'll call him Tim, I don't wanna give this guy's name away. So I give Tim a call and we talked for a little while and he said, yeah, I like to work with uh, Bill, my girlfriend's dad. So yeah, I, I worked with him and stuff like that. He's a great guy and everything. He said that he would love to have a magician and he used to have a magician and he just stopped accepting my calls. And I, that was one of the uh, first red flags that popped into my mind. The second one was, I was asking him, okay, how do I get paid and how much? $75 a show. <coughs> oh shit. And I was really oblivious at this point because I know that was extremely low to pay somebody, but I didn't know how much a magician would get paid. Now, I do everything myself and I get paid way more than that. You have to understand at this point, I just moved out and I'm very eager. Like I really, just, I just wanna go out and perform. Like there are times where I just go out and perform for free. Like when I go to New York and things like that, I just do it for fun with friends, but this, it's a whole nother level when you get paid for it. So I, I kind of like accepted it and I, he asked me, so what type of like events do you want to do? I was like, I, I really want to do corporate events, uh, weddings. I don't want to do anything with kids. I, I, I clearly remember doing saying that. I said, I don't want to perform for kids. Kids are very difficult for me because I just can't grasp their attention or the things I perform it goes over their head. They just don't get it. And he was like, okay, all right, no problem. And he wanted me to take like pictures for him. Sounds really weird. Sounds like something Chris Hansen would uh, hop on real quick. See, everything is just fine, but I need you to have a seat right there for him. Yes, sir. Put the camera down. Just have a seat, please. But <laughs> no, he wanted pictures for his website. I'm like, all right, cool. But he wanted them like immediately, and I had nothing. I don't. I didn't have the photographer that I have now. So I literally had to set my phone up and take like the worst pictures. I don't know what I was thinking. I, I was. Yeah, I know what I was thinking. I was thinking, what is, what does a magician do? And it was just the worst, those cringy, just generic pictures you see all over the internet. All right, so I sent them to him. He said they looked fine or whatever. And then um, I get a call back a couple days later and he says, oh, hey, yeah, I got a few parties for you. If you go to these 
addresses here and th on these dates i'm like all right cool and he's like yeah i have a eight-year-old's birthday party what what the fuck and i just made this face like i did i tell you that i don't want to work for kids and that's the first thing you give me and he gave me a few others and one was like it was pretty fine it was like somewhere it was way up north and it was like a breakfast thing for families and stuff like that. I kind of don't really like doing family stuff either. That stuff's really awkward when you're trying to show somebody a trick and they're messing with their kid and they won't stay still. I just, God. <laughs> and the other thing was for like very, very young children too. And this guy just did not listen. He would just tell me this, oh yeah, I have something. And it's, it's, a, it's for kids. And he just basically just blew off what I was telling him. And I thought to myself, I was like, okay, if he's giving me these gigs, I guess I have to work up to get those corporate th gigs and that, that's how I get paid more. So that's what I was expecting. So I do a few gigs for him and things like that. And there was this one time, it was kind of my fault, but what he did that he would give me an email, but he wouldn't really space it out correctly. So he would just have this big block of like really weird, it would be not spaced out. Like you couldn't really read it. And I read it really fast and it looked like he bullet pointed two gigs, but what it was, it was actually three gigs altogether. So he booked me for like three gigs in one day, which it, that's a, that's a lot. I usually do like one gig a day. It's uh, sometimes I'll do two at the most, but he gave me like three gigs and they were like probably like an hour apart from each other driving. And I went to one of them, it went okay. And like, I was supposed to get paid like 75 bucks for each show. First one paid me like 40 for some reason, I don't know why. And I didn't fuss or anything. And then I left, drove all the way to the other one, it was pretty early to it. And I get a call and from the person who needed me and I'm like, oh, hey, are you guys inside the building? They're like, no, we're all the way on the other side of the state. And I was really confused. And I looked at the email. It was just so poorly put together. I couldn't read it correctly. So I had to leave that gig, drive all the way to the other side of the state, get there and drive around for another hour because I got lost. And it was like somewhere in the boonies. It was just one of the cringiest, it, it was like one of the worst like performing nights but they gave me an extra tip they gave me a hundred bucks which is still not even close to what i even do for one gig now and drive all the way home so basically just to drive around i'm getting paid gas money and the funny thing is is that i would go back to my girlfriend's dad like if i had to go pick my girlfriend up this is before we uh were living together uh if we were hanging out at her place or i had to pick her up or something uh, he would tell me stories about Tim, the guy, the event planner. He would say like, yeah, if you try to mention like money to him, he would try to like mumble under his breath or you would try to forget or something like that or he would try to move past the point. And also I forgot about this. He wrote me a check for the first two gigs I did. It was like a $150 check and he put like wrong information on it. I tried to cash it, they wouldn't cash it. So I had to go back to him, have him write me another check after I did a couple more gigs and it was like a $300 check and I got to cash that. And I was, <sighs> I, I do understand that he was an older guy. I, I, he was like past boomer. He was probably from the silent generation, probably on the cusp of silent generation and boomer, which is really fucking old. And I'm trying not to be mean, but, God, this guy got so many things wrong. But he did give me a couple of pretty good gigs. Uh, there's this one that it was all the way at the seaport in Boston, which is a really, really nice area. And it was probably the most he ever paid me, which was like 200 bucks at the time. And what really, really upset me was he, I, I guess he emailed, we were like in a three-way email. I don't remember what it was, but somehow, I've gotten an email of the invoice of the person who wanted me to be there. And the invoice was me getting like 200 bucks and he got like 40% of like something else. So he got like almost like half of my check and he wasn't even there. So 
I'm getting paid more, but if I'm getting paid $75 for these shows, how much is it getting for the other ones? And that really just set me off. And so <laughs> what I did is actually, whenever they wanted to rebook me, I gave them my information and I ended up charging them through me. And, <laughs> and it actually made it cheaper for them because they're paying two people separately. And won't you just pay one guy that does everything and instead of paying two people when one guy does all the work still it doesn't make any sense and i probably got booked by them by like about three four times great great people always in boston love those guys all right the one thing to really like drive me up the fucking wall was just one thing that happened was that he gave me a gig it was like some event don't remember what it was doesn't really matter uh one event it was like the first one of the year i think of 2018 so a couple years ago, the first event of the year. So I'm like, all right, I'm excited. I was a little bit nervous. And what I did, I uh, had to go from work straight to there. And it was about like an hour and a half drive. I'm like, all right, I'll do that. And uh, a couple months later, the event comes up. I'm like, okay, cool. I get off work. I drive all the way down there. There's nowhere to park. I'm like, okay and there's no way to get into the building. There's there's literally no one around. It's like the middle of nowhere. And I text him, I'm like, uh, hey, where is everybody? He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, uh, um, at this event you wanted me to be at. He was like, oh yeah, that was canceled months ago. So I drove all the way out there for nothing. And he was like, oh yeah, you, you should have called me before the, the day before. I'm like, Dude, why, why didn't you contact me when, why wouldn't you contact me if your event was canceled? Wouldn't you just call everyone to say, hey, that's not happening, it, I'm sorry. That's all you had to do. Everyone would be like, all right, cool. And I'm the only one, apparently I'm the only one that wasn't contacted because no one else showed up. Unless I don't know who else didn't show up. I didn't really know that many people that worked there. Also, I would go out uh, into like dangerous snowstorms. I mean like, Snowstorms, I had to drive like over an hour to drive in for 75 fucking dollars. I would drive out there and I'm going down the street and I'm seeing cars in Boston sliding down the street, hitting each, hitting each other for $75. And I, I uh, it was just so uncomfortable to, to be there because it was just, it was everything I didn't want. It was me with a bunch of, bunch of kids uh, a bunch of families and a bunch of people that just don't want to be there. And I'm there on a snowstorm. I'm barely getting paid anything. And it was just like one of the worst, like worst experiences of my performing like career so far. And another annoying thing that he would do is that um, he would make me wear like stupid fucking like elf hats and stuff like that. And like after he walked away, I would just take it off and like he would come back and he would put it back on me like I was a little kid and it was just really annoying. And the last time I ever performed for him, it was actually, it was some car dealership. I, I've, car dealerships are pretty easy. They're sometimes they were pretty fun, but I did um, a car dealership and for some reason, I don't know why he did this. He hired me and he hired some other guy uh, who the, the guy was fine. We talked for a couple seconds and It was just weird. I don't I was I don't know why he wanted two magicians performing at the same party at the same time and when I, I Went to the gig the gig went fine. It was a lot of fun. I Went there and I talked to the guy. I'm like, hey, how you doing man? I, I don't remember what his name was, but I could probably look it up or whatever but he was like, oh, what are you performing? I'm like, I'm doing a lot of street magic. A lot of, I was basically just ripping off everything David Blaine was doing in his specials, but he was doing more mentalism stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And that kind of ended there because we didn't want to step on each other's toes. It was luckily, luckily we, we got along in those five words <laughs> that we exchanged. But that's the weird thing. That's like having two bands play at the same time gig at the same time it's gonna have like that fucking scott pilgrim set up when you have battle of the bands or whatever but like imagine just having a magician come up to you and show you something and he leaves and then another magician comes up and shows you the same exact thing or something very similar it's gonna get re really repetitive and boring it just doesn't it doesn't make any sense unless it was like a sea of like five thousand people that 
that's the only explanation I would have. And I thought that was just a really weird and like unprofessional experience. And then I thought I was starting to get paid more because I got paid 200 bucks for that uh, when I did the seaport in Boston. And I look at the check, it was something like 85 bucks or something like that. I'm like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking done. I'm just not doing this anymore. So I just started ignoring his calls and uh, I, yeah, I started ignoring his calls and he would text me and say, oh, hey, I need someone in Faneuil Hall. Are you up to it? I'm like, no, thanks. And he would text me again. Hey, I, I need someone over here at this date. Do you want to do it? I'm like, you know, actually, you know what happened? Actually, I confronted him about the money. I'm like, hey, $75 is really not that much. It's it's like, it's barely enough for me to even get there. And he was like, well, I can't really raise my, I, I can't really give you any more. The highest I could go is $150. I'm like, well, I charge more than that for me just to go there. So, and plus you're taking nearly half of the entire check when sometimes you're not even at the gig or you're just standing around not doing anything. And he'll wear the same exact outfit like at every single gig too, which is kind of gross. And sometimes it'll be back to back, days back to back. And I just don't want to work with him again. I thought that was a text from him for, for a second. That would have been fucking weird. He's like, I, I heard you were talking shit about me. No, but yeah, just very unprofessional. Just took everyone, just highway robbery. And he just, he just took advantage of people that had a passion. And the funny thing was that Jennifer, know, like she knows of him for a few years. And there was one time where he had like a huge event and a bunch of entertainers and people serving food were I, I, I'm not I, this can't can or can't be true I don't know this is hearsay but he had a big event and he was actually getting divorced at the time by his wife or whatever and he had this huge party and have had my uh, girlfriend's dad there perform for kids and all these other performers there and at the end of the entire gig, no one got paid because the wife took all the money out of the account and everyone just had to shrug their shoulders and move on. It was just, oh God. So the message of this video, don't be a bitch, no. <laughs> no, so the message of this video is is that I, I still don't have an answer for this question. I still ask myself every time I get booked for something or whenever I go out and I perform is how much do I, how much should I charge or how much should I be booked for or how much can I do this to be financially stable? And what people always tell me is that just book yourself uh, what do you think you're worth? Don't have someone book you for like $75, $50, $20. Don't have someone do that for you. And I was actually, that last gig I was in, I didn't get any footage of it. When I was in the P3 studio uh, at Magi Fest, we actually um, got <laughs> interrupted by Eric Tate, Nick LaCapo, and uh, Ryan Plunkett. And we hung out for a little bit and I was asking him about magic and actually Lacapo's from Boston, which was really funny. And he was just like, uh, just price yourself how much you think you're worth. And Tate chimed in also. He said the same thing. He's like, yeah, just price it how much you think you are worth, uh, your time is worth and everything. And also Plunkett came in and said, yeah, just just if they try to lowball you, they don't think you're worth it. And it's okay to not take the gig. I've done that before where people try to lowball me so much. I'm just like, you know, it's not even, yeah, I'm not going to do it because <laughs> if they lowball you that much, that just means the party's not going to be that great or it's just going to suck or they're probably not even going to pay you in the end. That That's happened to me where they lowball me and I never even got paid for it. But just don't even like, just don't let anyone take advantage of you, especially if it's your passion to do this just put yourself in charge and also don't 
ask for things, tell them that you're going to do something, tell them that you're gonna be booked for something and tell them that you charge this price and don't back down from that because people will just nickel and dime you for anything. But thank you so much guys, thank you for watching, thank you for 150 subscribers and I plan on doing more videos, I'm planning on going to Nemcon, which is a very tiny convention in Connecticut where my friend Nevin is. So we're gonna vlog there. I'm trying to bring one of my layman friends out there too to just get fried by Aussie, if Aussie's okay being in front of the camera. <laughs> but thank you so much guys. Please like and subscribe uh, to this video and I'll check you out next time. Thank you.